better. Question is how much? Well, we're about to find out. It's a best of one. And OG are going to be standing on the T side with Vitality on the CT side. We've got Sabu up on the catwalk with the duel. He's already in hand. It's a great opening headshot to start the season with. Flames going down, but that's a very nice return. And back into a 4 on 4 we go. A lot of damage on Neo Frag, but he's still fighting. He's still trying to get up that cat. Oh, oh, oh no! There's a team kill in the middle of it, and that really slows it down. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Nice shot from Apex, and that's going to seal things. Dexter not able to get a pick out towards long. Now he's got to shuffle up Catwalk a little bit late when the round is essentially already over. It's going to be a pistol round for Vitality. As Dexter takes some of these final duels, Magus is going to find him with a USP and one to nothing. I like it. I mean, you set yourself up that quickly on the catwalk. If they could have negotiated that first fight against Cyber a little bit more smoothly, maybe they just win the battle against him, then they're all in position to go. Oh, okay. That's a good flick, though. It is. That's a nice flick. <laughs> they're having a good time still. No one's mad. All right. Vitality winning the opening round, though. Are they going to be enjoying that? Dexter on that scout. I agree, though, just to, to follow up. Dexter is definitely a, a special talent. Scott. Such an incredible passion for the game that, uh, you know, it's, it's hard not to be swept uh, swept up in it. I just like seeing the confidence, too. It's like, we, we you know, he's obviously, from our perspective, a special player, and he, he knows it as well. He's in there full confidence that he's going to be able to bring something really unique to this team. 1-0. Scouts are out. A little bit more of a patient round. Behind this scout, there's no investment from OG. Just a P250 on Neo Frag, so don't expect a whole lot of action in this round. At the moment, OG just pause and looking for mistakes. And they're not getting any either, so yeah, a little bit of a, of a, of a slow round, this one. But I guess they're going to be buying in the next one anyway, so they're pretty much standard stuff here. Vonder's the only one to pick OG today? I feel the, the thing is, he's been doing that for such a long time. I even It's even subconsciously in my brain, I feel like I shouldn't be picking them just to not step on his... His toes? Yeah, I feel like I should be, should be nice like that. You're going to let him have OG? Yeah. And I also, out of a season like this, I just feel like it's so hard to predict anything. I was going over all the, the pickums. I was doing them over Ooh. on last TV. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's so hard to see. That's a nice headshot, though, to bring down Megas in the corner and he's only gonna get the one with the mp9 that probably should have been a couple more there still some damage being dealt out here gonna be a bomb plant at the very least so pretty good round so far a little bit of a tap coming out could burst from apex oh no taking down flames and now they're in trouble actually two versus two yeah m4 in hand as well dropped no head armor that's gonna come back to haunt him this is a lot of damage john even if og's to lose this what an important shot from sphinx traded off by the glock but the nade's gonna finish him and zaiwu has time for the defuse gonna salvage m4 but man that is costly one unarmored, unhelmeted defender almost lost the round for Vitality. Strong reminder. I mean, you have a round like that. Should wake everyone up uh, on the Vitality side to say, hold on, we should have we should have been able to clear that. Even Dupree, the, you know, following up on the MP9, probably should have been able to do a little bit more. But Yeah, it looked like he should have been in position for at least a double kill, transfer targets in the middle of the spray down. So very dangerous. What a huge round for OG. This buy in the next round is so dangerous. Vitality's on the back foot already. Well, let's see. Third round coming up, and they are just... That's depleted all of their money on the CT side. They had to, they had to rebuy almost everything. Nice Ooh. flick on Apex. Through the door, but still is down to 13 health. And out long, they're, they're winning this fight too. Even just a little bit of damage, you can see Magus immediately backing off. There's three people there, and basically, Fiku on his own managed to, to push them all back. Yeah, one player out long denied access to the long A pit for Vitality's defense. That's a good early win of the long battle for OG. And now, I mean, look, not only the damage that's been done to Apex and Magus, but look at the utility. This is going to be a hard round for Vitality to get back into. Still, some smokes to utilize. One dropping down in mid is going to isolate Flames. They're going to go investigating Apex. No HP, but that's all there for the trade from Dupree. Smart play from Vitality and the one for one and possibly a risky one too that did give up the entire b bomb site behind them but luckily no one was pushing to find that out so i was going to go investigate but dexter is in the perfect position we'll be pick him off right away and there's nobody even at the a bomb site right now if they just keep slowly pushing this they're going to find an empty bomb site i don't know if vitality even can fight this no the only option is if you want to get aggressive in middle and take over middle and flank up catwalk but i think with the money at hand they're just going to choose to save it this early on sphinx and meg is going to rotate over to the b bomb site Tuck in nice and tight, and a first round on the board for OG. Well, what a great start. I mean, following up from the previous round where they did all the damage, and now right into this one. It looks so smooth. They won 
well, the mid fight they kind of won maybe without even knowing, but certainly that long battle was, was perfect. One versus three out there, and he still managed to, to push them all the way back. Yeah, I don't even think Zaiwu made a noise at the end. I think that's Dexter just saying, all right, the Molotov is about to fade. Let's see if someone's going to swing behind it and try and grab some information, try and find a fight. Perfect timing for him to scope in. Well, now that we have a little bit of break in the action, sure. what have you been spending your down time? We've been lacking some Counter-Strike for a while. I, I This is how it goes for me. I always feel like the first week, I'm like, oh, it's nice to have a little bit of a break, and then... That's about it for me. I'm like, okay, we should. Can we get this back online? Can we do some more stuff? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel you on that one. Uh, mostly just chilling at home, man. Just catching up at time at home. I took a little road trip up to northern Michigan for some national parks. Went up to the beaches of Lake Superior. Ooh. Painted Rocks National National Park. Yeah, you or do. Pictured, pictured Rocks. You've picked a nice spot there. Some good nature up there. I appreciate that. It's great nature. Yeah. I'm really unplugging all the way. <laughs> I like that. Fully. All right. Well... Hopefully, Vitality can come back into this a little bit early. OG seem to be really tuned into the game right now. Some good damage with the nades out there, and they're actually going to be allowed to escape. I thought for a minute they were going to get stuck out there. Into the pit we go. Flames looking to take this fight. Actually, could have easily been dead. It's just a scout out there, but I'm surprised that he manages to get back from that car. They have all the long control in the world uh, on the T side, and they got five people out here, so probably they're just going to commit to it. At least, like, yeah, I mean, that, that'd be the easy option, right? Especially with all five players here. No more presence on the map, as you said. I think it's just kind of a waiting game to see if there's going to be any kind of a reaction from Vitality. But, yeah, pretty much progressing up long with a minute left on the clock is, is the only real option. And Vitality's actually in a good position to slow this down and maybe throw a spanner in the works. But the question is, do they have the resources? Not that many needs. Maybe a couple of flashes. Got to be perfectly timed, though. And you can tell it's very hard. The second smoke goes up, and they already make their way past under 50 seconds, but very, very patient walk out along here for OG. They are so aware that there could be a flash coming to the smoke, so they're never going to be that many people looking at it right now. They found Saibu in that scout. Oh, it's a nice headshot, but they know exactly where he is, and surely eventually they're going to be able to find him. A little bit of a flash assist there, and they're going to be able to take him down. So three versus four, and a bomb plant coming up. The M4s are just worth more. They end up backing out of there, so it'll be a quick two rounds in a row here for OG. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, really good stuff. I mean, that's making the call as well to progress up long when you have plenty of time to deal with any issues. They could patiently wait and handle Zaiwu with those repeaks. And Apex is going to find an M4 at the end of the round as well. He'll be able to evacuate also. So Vitality playing the economy game, trying to keep as many guns alive during this stretch of losses. But we're all tied up at two. And OG, I mean, they've won these back-to-back -back rounds relatively clean. I think four players surviving in both of them. So money's building up for the T side. This is a good start for OG. Kind of hard to explain sometimes how you can almost feel that one team is just more tuned in or just a little bit more awake when it comes to some of this stuff. So definitely that's the feeling you're getting from OG at the moment is that they are there's no slow start here for them today. They're uh, they're ready to fight. And you kind of have to. I mean, this is a best of one format. So you don't have the luxury of of rolling out of bed a little bit tired and like, oh, let's see if we can get this first game underway. You're going to have to make up for this really fast on the Vitality side. And if you're Vitality too, like even in a, in a grand picture, right? Like, you, you know, obviously with a player coming in, you're gonna be, you know, you know it's gonna take a little bit of time to acclimate Sphinx into, into how you wanna play the game and into some new teammates, but you're also trying to kind of get past and forget about the struggles you've had in the first half of the year, trying to get some wins to start building momentum moving forward. Dupree had a chance, gets taken out by Neofrag. Just a lot of people swinging in. Again, almost, they have to make up their minds. They want to throw away these two M4s or just try and save them. And yeah, that's already been made up. Quick decision for Vitality, which I do kind of appreciate. I mean, hanging around front of the frag might not be worth it. So they're going to be backing out. Some, a lot of saving and a lot of uh, quick rounds going the way of OG. It's looking good right now for them. Yeah, pretty simplistic calling out of Nexa. I, I mean, remember, let's go back to, because this, I mean, he gave an interview as well that was a little bit laughed at when he, when he just kind of basically said, look, I'm not going to blow the world up with tactics. I want to play a more simple style. I want to play a more fragging style, more emphasis on trades and just straight up headshots. And he's got the team for it. At the moment, it's looking good against Vitality. Yeah, I mean, if, if I, I wouldn't question next to the way that, uh, that, that his career has been going so far in terms of doing the in-game leading stuff. I feel like he's got some, some pretty good track records. So hopefully... The firepower will be there to match it if they keep going deeper and deeper. Vitality is a strong test, though. I mean, you're not gonna—it's not gonna be easy necessarily winning on the on headshots alone against 
maybe just go sideways or something like that. Could be could be an issue. But Strike. I think we talked about this as well. The shift in like kind of like the core and power structure of the team from French players to Danish players. Danish coach, French in-game leader, language barrier. Vitality's had a lot of issues to work through. Obviously still on that road to finding a proper solution. Neil Frag clearing out mid, help of a pop flash, and very, very quickly with some safety outside the double doors, and very, very quickly can apply some pressure to the B bomb site with mid to B smokes. There's no delay in this. This is so fast. Apex is going to come up huge here, and there's already three people looking at the window. They're able to take him down, and the lone side of the bomb site make is just so many angles for him to hold. The flashbang coming over the top, you can't look away from it either. And it's going to be a three on three sure, but the bomb will be planted, and unless they find a kill right now, Vitality might have to go with the round once again. They have one flashbang to try and enter with. And no kits. Yeah. And they know they're going up against an AWP as well. So I think we're already, I think the save call's already there. Dexter's taking a deep angle. He's going to get one more pick surely before all is said and done. He's hunting for it. Gives up the angle at perhaps the most inopportune moment, but feels potentially doesn't know quite yet that they're saving. A fourth round in a row for OG. And a great, that's a cool round to illustrate the power, I think, of throwing that mid smoke when you're basically already on the CT side of middle because, you know, they're going to hear the smoke going down and the calls are going to be coming out on the CT side saying, well, there's a smoke, it could be a mid to B split, but by the time you've finished that sentence, it already is a mid to B split. And, and you, whereas if you throw it from way outside of the, on the T side of mid, then yep. you're going to have way more of a warning system. You can hear it popping on the wall. You can hear it bouncing down. There's, there's a lot more going into it. That was quick, super quick from OG. I'll say, I mean, we talk about some of the simple, effective tactics that OG are busting out. You want to talk about, you know, a philosophy for them that's just kind of finding the kills, focus on trading. You go to the other side, Vitality. A couple shaky initial points of contact throughout this half so far. Apex there, not looking super convinced with that fight that he was selecting. Saw Dupree towards the B bomb state earlier, probably should have had two, was only able to get the one. There's some shakiness right now in this Vitality team starting out a little bit slow. Great run. Four in a row. And going into round number seven. Vitality, all this time, the economy has been one of the really big weaknesses for them. They need to start to not just win rounds, but preferably win them with a, a number of people alive here on the CT side, or they're going to be <laughs> they're going to be in a lot more trouble soon. Yeah, and uh, economy's been an issue, but they're making they're making all the right decisions to continually save these weapons and bring danger forward into the next round. Uh, especially this early in the game, we're only in round number seven. Plenty of time for them to recover and come back into this and regain some momentum. But yeah, it's looking harsh, and it probably feels harsh when you're not even able to really fight for some of these some of these retakes. Four on two, 55 seconds left on the clock. OG still spread out in the default. Now convening towards what looks like will be an A split with three players up catwalk. Two players out long late. Actually, Dexter's going to rejoin his teammates out towards long, set them up for a take. From the defensive point of view, this is so devastating. If you lose one player, it just feels like the whole defense can crumble. But if you win the first fight, maybe it's going to be different. Out here, Dupree goes down, and I'll look at the position of Apex. He's in so much trouble. He has to try and get back up. Both him and Spinks, actually, they win a fight each. That's massive. Spinks spinning around and taking down Fiku. I can't believe they managed to recover this A defense. They should have probably lost this when they lost Dupree out long, and they managed to still win both those fights. Yeah, but this was, this was actually well-crafted from OG also. The contact coming first off Cat walk which brings the rotator back towards the a bomb site isolates to pre out towards long it was really just the smoke from apex that saved the day blocked yep. off all the vision from the long take perfect and dexter gonna survive after the round and nade does some damage but doesn't complete the kill and vitality's back on the board so interesting there's got to be there's got to be some engineers in the audience there's got to be like a, a technical word for a structure that is good but you know you sort of remove one piece of it and it immediately is is screwed and that's that's what these eight defenses feel like sometimes it's not called like the keystone or the capstone of like the roman arch is that last stone that keeps it all together i like that yeah let's use that i'm gonna, I I'm gonna agree i'm no engineer but i know things there we go could have been counter-strike engineer <laughs> chemical engineer exactly <laughs> he's on ends now isn't he yeah um but yeah, that's what it feels like for, the, for that kind of a defense. You could see, I mean, I, I agree that smoke is probably worth replaying. He really acted quickly. Oh. Not even close to worth it. No, not at all. Megas is not having a whole lot of fun. Grabs the op to the back of the B platform. K-sharp spot for you old school players. 
There's a throwback. Default offense for OG. More of a fan of the K sharp special myself. Yeah, K sharp special. Kind of thing you only get in Dallas. Still taking it a little bit slowly. I like the mix of pacing as well coming out from OG. We've seen some of the really quick rounds. This one, way more measured. About a minute on the clock now. Setting up on the catwalk. This time with everyone here. This could easily be turned into uh, to some kind of a mid fight if they if they get the right uh, read on what's happening at the A-bomb side. Are they going to go for it? Double smoke to create a really long wall and then the flashbang behind it. Apex not connecting with the bullets. Finally taking down flames, but that takes a long time. Backup is here though, and he might have just done enough. I swear I thought this was going to be the end yeah. of the round for them, but he manages to make plenty of damage out of that position and Dexter is on his own. That was a really, really thin defense coming out there, but it worked. Yeah, and let's just say it, hey, we're all thinking it. That was not the prettiest of fights from Apex, but he still gets the job done. Dexter left in a 1v4. He's got the first kill. Now in a 1v3. No time, though. And he's going to do some saving of his own. Op is going to stay in his hands, and we're all tied up at four as Vitality string two together. All right, so... I slowly waking up into this one you could tell they're starting to get there vitality ninth round is coming up but we're tied up once again the economy is still pretty sketchy on the ct side but then again maybe a little bit is on the og side although you could tell dex has been saving that all <laughs> he's got eight thousand in the bank yeah just just re rebuying utility as needed plenty of time to look in towards the site no adbp here for Mega score Dupree, as we saw in the previous round. OG's got control of Catwalk early. Two players deep by the stairs. Neil Frag and Nexa going to call teammates over to him. Dexter's going to join up. So is Fiku and Flames. Whole team. So A hit, likely up Catwalk. And it looks like Dexter's going to be holding mid, hoping one of the defenders rotating over forgets to cross the T and dot the I and forgets a flashbang that he can pick off. Honestly, the way that that fight was happening, they're gonna do the exact same thing, but with Molotovs on top this time, Cyber with the AWP. Oh, it's another team kill on that catwalk. Don't wanna be seen that. Sphinx gets a headshot on top, and that buys so much space and time for Cyber. Neil Frag nearly burning in that corner, but the smoke will help him out. Still got 45 seconds. Apex getting shot in the back. It's a pretty good return. 40 seconds now for this two on three, but they are boxed in. I think that booster trying to look over the smoke, but even that's gonna be a little bit difficult. Fika going down and Neil Frag just nowhere to stand at the end. I feel like Cyber get that get, oh, just this this A defense is getting away with a, a quite a bit. Probably should have been wiped out once again. Yeah, well, there's the, the entries for OG aren't coming out. It's that first kill that's been all important because there's not a whole lot of strength behind it. You'll see when the first player goes down, look at him progressing up. Obviously, team killed, but Nexa doesn't push forward. He goes over towards the corner. All of his teammates stream behind him towards the corner as well. Nobody's pressuring the bomb site. It happened previously with Apex inside the bomb site with an M4 as well. And there's not enough strength in that A hit at the moment for OG. Vitality has been able to come back into this game and regain the lead. I feel like going back to that A hit, though, makes a lot of sense given how almost successful they were in the previous round. So I, I don't even mind them rerunning the same strategy because they must have felt the same way that, okay, next time if we find A base there again, we just win the fight really quick and that's it. But um, this time they ran into the AWP instead. So a little bit of a, of a different defense for the CT side, too. And again, they're trying to keep it mixed up. Apex is still in the middle, but this time side was out long with Spink. So they're, they're trying to create small variations here in what the setup is like. Well, they're also saying, you know, we've stopped your A hit two or three times now when you try to come up catwalk with force actually attacking into the bomb site. So we can play it. We don't think you're going to go back to it. We're going to put Zaiwu out towards a more passive setup to maybe pick one or two players off if they progress if you go back into it. But otherwise, you want to emphasize somewhere else on the map. And OG's kind of calling that bluff. They're saying, yeah, we don't mind going back to it. Ooh. That's a pretty good grenade, though. I This is interesting, and this is kind of one of the sort of mind games that could be between in-game leaders. How many times do you return to something like this? Much slower this time. Last time it was, you know, double smoke and the flash on top and trying to run it down. This time they're basically crawling their way there until they get some sort of contact. But that's going to be against the AWB Cyber, and yeah, that's the result. If you're slow turning that corner... It's going to cost you every single time. Now, they do have out in the middle Dexter alone with the AWP, so a missed shot was going to cost him his life. And it's still going to be 
the end of him when Magus shows up, but a three versus four and a bomb plant. Yeah, and a flank as well from Spinks, who's just paused and waiting. No flashbangs to take Zaiwu off the angle, so he again gets that first kill on the attack up catwalk. There's another one from Zaiwu, and all of a sudden, defense, not enough resources to watch the flank. Spinks has a double kill, and Vitality has a two-round lead. That's a very cool retake. You could tell they were under almost no pressure to do much of anything, and they, managed, they, they took away the attention, and then the the flank was activated. It's yeah, great communication. Good play as well from Zaiwu. Exactly as designed. This time they call a more passive setup, a retake setup. If the catwalk hit is supposed to come in, he gets the one all-important kill. As I said, no flashbang to take him off the angle, so Nexus just walking right into a bullet. Oof. Oof. Okay. That's Fair nice. Play. It's good to see them come alive again. They had a they had a slow start to this game. But now they seem much more awake. How long we go? The fight was almost won earlier by just Pika, but now he's got a lot of teammates with him and everyone is flashed or smoked all at the same time. It's two for one trading out long. And Simon's gonna have to make his escape with that AWP, although not that far. He's sticking around in spite of having no smoke to put out a potential Molotov, which is kind of a scary if you're in this position. We'll see if it's gonna be to struggle for him or not they're still hanging out out there i'd really worry they have two molotovs if one of them is thrown here he might be dead it's coming flames is lined up for it at the moment dupree's too far away with his smoke to have any support to put it out sometimes you might be able to see the teammate chuck that in zaiwu at the car shifting into the corner but that oh the molotov's going deep he's backed up right into it he has one how many more can he grab the spam and the flames put him down and Mage is waiting for it. It's going to be a grenade to set it up. No, he goes straight in there. And Flames with a really important return headshot. 50 seconds on the clock now for Dupree to try and find something. Now, he does have something to work with here, especially that HE grenade on Nexa. Could turn it into a one-on-one -on -one right away. And he knows it as well. He's thinking about it. Just waiting for the bomb plant. There it goes right on top. And they don't even get the bomb plant. It actually blows him up before he put in the last digit. That's amazing. One versus one now in 30 seconds, and Dupree's already playing under the mind game here. Looking on top of the smoke, hoping for a quick peek from Flames. He's not getting it, though. And this time, the bomb will finally be planted. Dupree sneaking around. This would be a huge one versus two. Take all the momentum away from OG if they can win this one. And he's got a great angle for it. I don't think Flames maybe realizes yet if he could have picked up another grenade in the process here, but there's not that many places that Flames could have gone. Dupree surely knows he hasn't heard him fall down. He knows exactly. Oh, he's managed to figure it out. This is amazing. A one versus two. And what a clutch for Dupree to get himself into the game. Yeah, what a nice collected, calm, poised clutch from Dupree. The nade is perfect, even stops the plant. And as you said, the move he makes as the tap comes in with his smoke down from elevator boxes is just so perfectly timed. There's not enough time to get to catwalk for the final OG player. So just just really well played from Dupree. All that experience. Flames had no chance whatsoever. Nice! Bit of frustration now for OG on a good run earlier, four in a row, but they have been stumped. It's been five straight for Vitality. They're on fire. They've got a three-round lead. It's very cool to see him put together all of the little clues into where he actually could find that final player. Seven to four. They are starting to run it back in a huge way here on the Vitality side. Sabu up there at 11 to 4, so he's had himself a pretty decent game right now, and maybe that's part of the reason why he's feeling a bit more bold in this round. Going back to that aggressive catwalk position with the AWP. Feels like he must have must have seen something. It should be a decent nade. Ooh, a really nice nade. Fantastic utility damage to start things out. This aggression, though, could backfire. First time they've gone for it, and Fiku's ready and waiting. Perfect headshot onto Magisk. That might put Dupree into a tough spot. Gonna have to use his smoke if you want to transfer over, transfer over to the B-bomb site. But he's gonna trust an Apex to hold on to it. Another decent nade. I do like it from mentality in terms of trying to switch it up the defense and just having that one round in there. Well, remember, they've been getting pounded over at the A bomb site. This has been a repetitive hit, like three, four multiple times towards Catwalk, one towards Long A as well. Now shifting back to the B bomb site, they're going to catch Vitality on the wrong side of the map. 35 seconds. That is a very annoying smoke, but they're going to go right through it. They say, all right, we can't really wait it out. This could be 15 seconds left if they did. Instead, they try to jump through and they beat Apex. They've caught him a couple of times. And now the smoke down in the double doors there, so he's gonna, they're going to be able to at least get the bomb plant down. And in a five on three, 
Not really much uh, Vitality could do. This is it's another good hit. Sometimes it's that simple. Spam through the smoke and one jumps through at the same time. Apex was trying to return some fire. Gets caught with his pants down. OG finally put a stop to the run. It's going to be a fifth round on the board. Yeah. Vitality never really convinced that was going to end up at the B-bomb site. Dupree never even considered shifting all the way over. Yeah, look of French disgust on the face of Apex. <laughs> yeah, truly. Uh, it's sad as well because that early flashbang just did nothing in upper dark. It was just the, the way that he used the pillar as coverage was absolutely perfect. So a couple of uh, missteps there for Vitality, and they give up the run. Letting OG back into the first half here. Five to seven going to be the scoreline. But at least they saved the AWP and some rifles on the CT side so they can keep fighting. They were running out of steam for a minute there on the OG side. So you could feel the oxygen leaving the, the OG camps. Good to find a solution, though. Shout out to Nexa for eventually switching things up, kind of luring Vitality into an A defense, a strong A defense in a four on five and finding the weak points. I always feel like that must be one of the harder things as an in-game leader to call the same thing, you know, three or four times, even though it fails, but you, you know, you obviously have some internal logic for why you're doing it, but the team has to trust that too, right? Yeah, I think I think part of it has got to be he, he had to have been Nexus so so happy and so pleased to consistently get catwalk control with no real contention. They didn't have to deal with anyone harassing them in middle, no ops trying to peek or find a pick, no utility running over the double doors. They're able to get to the, towards the stairs, no opper sitting at the wall, yeah. at the half wall, you know, nothing like that. So he's just like, all right, if you guys are going to give us clear access all the way to the stairs on catwalk, we're just going to keep going back at it. Seven to five. In round number 13, a minute and 10 seconds left on the clock. Utility being spent now to gain control in middle. Vitality is running out of money, running out of funds. Yeah, once again, with their backs against the wall in that sense. They've already experienced that a couple of times. Don't want to be back there at all. Dupree sneaking up close after all of the chaos there. And a lot of spam through the wall. And look at Sphinx. He's made his way up deep into long. That's crazy. He could actually win this round if he keeps going. All oh, the timing of it is just perfect as well. Dexter just left his position. If Dupree can keep attention in this direction, new frag spotted him, that might be perfect. Sphinx is lining up for a huge multi-kill. Yes, he is. They don't even realize he's going to come running back. Takes one of them down, but it's a great spin. 25 seconds. So even if it's just a one-for-one -one trade, that takes all of the wind out of the sails of OG. They have to just push for it now. They're running out of time. Apex spinning around, but he looked away for way too long and gets shot in the back instead. Saibu traded and somehow OG able to get the bomb plant in spite of all of that work. Two versus three now, and Vitality not even close to retaking this. That is... That's actually unbelievable. Yeah, I think Apex may be a little bit over-eager to get behind the smokes on Catwalk, especially with the clock the way it was. Trying to push up and just eats a flashbang he never heard coming. Zaiwu not in any kind of a real position to kind of back that up and plug the hole in the defense. This has got to be a painful loss for Vitality. They had the Sphinx flank. They had everything. They had information. They had a backstab. And it all slips away at the end. Yeah, I, I even thought, I mean, he, maybe he could have had the double kill, but I thought even just the one for one was going to be plenty enough with 25 seconds left. Yeah. Everything you do from that point on on the T side is so telegraphed, right? You can't, you, you just have to brute force it. And they did and it worked. So I guess more power to them. But that, that's a problem now for Vitality. The money is gone. Huge problem. This sets OG up to have a very, very nice opening half of Dust 2. Yeah, this one right here. Coming through the smoke. Apex completely blind. Good job from Flames. Double checking it. Apex gesturing like he couldn't hear something. More French disgust. It's building. No matter what, having the camera on Apex at any point in time, whether he's happy or whether he's disgusted like that, it's still it's just always good. I wonder what the what the gesture was to his to his headset. I think it, it was like comms from a teammate, couldn't hear the flash. Oh, maybe that's what he said. I didn't hear the flash. Could have been shoot me, shoot me right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It's a pretty even scoreline. I mean, seven to six, it's anybody's game still. That's what we like to see. Nice opening kill for Nexa taking down Magus. They were ready for that one. Yeah, tough angle to deal with. You're hoping for kind of a more exposed battle deeper in towards lower dark, and they had the shallow, shallow angle right at the entrance, right at the lip. Saiwu salvaged the M4, but he's got no armor. The Molotov gonna force him off. 
the railing. And the rest of Vitality rotating over to the A bomb site. 6 7. Well, they're all in the right position, but they just have none of the equipment that you really want to see. Nice little counter boost to come up there from a position that probably OG feel like they already checked. And now they're giving frags away. Another one for Saibu, and that turns it back into a favorable four versus three in favor of Vitality. And even worse, the clock is running down low. They're going to go pick up the guns and also realize in the moment no one else is on catwalk so they can focus everything on long. This is a tough position to be in here for the T side. They should have already been winning this round, but now instead flashing their way through. Fiku, he's going to get the kill. And Flames comes through oh, the smoke no. somehow. <laughs> they managed to spin it around. And Dupree alone out here. That is a nice drive by Deagle headshot, but he has to try and salvage this round on his own. And it looks like he wants to as well. Might as well go all in for it here and try to see if he could be the hero. Won a 1v2 earlier. This would be so much more difficult. And I think he even realizes that's not worth the attempt. I've got the AWP, which we don't have the money for in the next round. So we're going to prioritize the weaponry to try and take an 8-7 lead into the second half. Both teams will have a shot at it. What a good return from OG. What a good recovery in the round. That early headshot from, from Fiku out long is one thing, but the fact that Flames came through the smoke, I don't think they were ready for it. Yeah, Dupree out here. They have the right idea, baiting out the shot, and he just needs to save this hole. That is the only thing that matters. Wow, tied up at 7-7. Seven to seven. The aggressive play. In a best of one, though, I mean, this is... This is the kind of round that Vitality could look back on later and say, okay, well, that that could easily be the difference maker. I wonder if Spinks maybe got blinded by the flashbang, because that's designed to kind of flash for him and Zaiwu to both go through and commit to that fight and mow down anyone blind along the wall. And obviously, Spinks just turned away from the fight at the last second, so I'm assuming he caught that flashbang full on and couldn't continue the fight. Oh, that's actually almost working out. Yeah, you're right. It could have been something like that, because... Did seem to be way more effective. That he jumped into that op fight, which for anyone that's ever played, you know, kind of like 1.6 is a more common thing. I feel like these days, that doesn't happen nearly as often. No, not as much. But that like jump into the crowd shot, yeah, yeah. like that. Always felt good, but. People are a lot quick, quicker today. There was that time in 1.6 where you could do the real scummy thing of like your use key would stop you. So you could jump into a fight, hold the use key, and it would just automatically stop oh, you and make you ready yeah. to go. Nice. The real tricks are coming out. That, yeah. You, that was a, you got a bad reputation if you used that tactic. That was frowned upon. Yeah, or just change your, uh, your interp settings enough that people can't hit you in the air. Yeah, that too. <laughs> and, and everyone's hitbox is triple in size. Exactly. There we go. Now we're bringing it out. But all the confessions are happening right now. 40 seconds on the clock, and they're not getting the fight that they really want down the middle. Look at two people out long. So even if they got the fight here, it'd be a little bit awkward maybe to keep going. Counter flash coming out, and we're down to 30 seconds. This is a 15th round, so... They have to go for it. They have to try and find some way in. This is an excellent defense. Dupree with a triple kill down the middle. And well, finally, OG just shut down. I feel like every defense has been difficult for this Vitality team, but this one is looking way more solid. Mega skin side of the site, and he's going to take care of business. It's just Dexter on his own with no time to win this round. So Vitality, at least they get to have, have their say at the end of the half. And that's, that's worth a lot here. Eight to seven finish in favor of the Vitality side. Well done. Triple spray down. Dexter's just going to survive. Play that CT sign. Now, the question is, have they got something cool prepared for us on that T side? It's coming right up. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be the question, especially, you know, remember the Sphinx just joining in. How, how deep can they go? How complicated can they make things? How complicated do they even want to make things? Zaiwu's going to lead the way up. Catwalk, P250. Nexa caught out in the open. Takes a couple extra, you know, shots to the body. Yeah. Look at this five-man stack for OG. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Help me out. Let's, Explain this to me. Let's, uh, this is called rolling the dice. Has the... They've tilted the map and everyone's, like, fallen onto this side? Like, they cannot make their way up the hill on the other side? Like, what's going on here? It's, like, fake gravity? Gravity mod on this on the map? Just pulling everyone to the B-bomb side? Well, making plenty of noise in middle as... Uh, Dupree has to be calling, like, three players in middle just swung to take a peek. Yeah. That's a suspicious amount of footsteps for for the middle, but surely that you can't ever guess that there's going to be five people at the B bomb site. So I don't even know. 
Flames is going to go take a look right on the other side of free, but he is a little bit on his own. Makus is coming up right behind, but not quite there. Oh, he actually pre-fired that, I think, and taking down Neo Frank. It's a triple kill, and he wants more bullets all the way across. Headshots coming through. Dexter oh, it, goes down, and he wants to go for the pistol ace. He's ready to fight it. Oh, no. He gets stolen away, but you can tell he was locked in for that one. What an amazing swing back for Megas. Yeah, that's huge. Especially, remember, they, they, they knew there was a massive amount of bodies in middle with that peak. I said to Priya, you called a three. That's just an estimate. Maybe he called four. Whatever it was. Magus, stunning headshots in this recovery. All the meanwhile, Vitality has two players walking up. Can't walk out towards the A bomb sites. They're starting to put it together. And Magus just, he even gets the goosh on the fifth player. Yeah, he was. He even got it. He was running and gunning. Oh, mate, that's a different kind of emotion for a patch. You could tell he was so happy. What a nice recovery. That second kill looked so quick as well. It's like, it, that was mind blowing. 17th round and a good start to the second half for the Vitality side. Deals and scouts though on the on the OG side of things. I still feel like it's so rare now that we see rounds change because of these deagles. I feel like that used to happen all the time. I, I yeah, I think yeah, I mean, look, they're always going to change the round to uh to they're they're always going to have that ability, but I think a couple things obviously the, the era of online COVID Counter-Strike made the Deagle a very annoying weapon to have to deal with. Yeah, true. And I think obviously now teams have just, uh, I don't want to say they've gotten necessarily like much better at handling these kinds of rounds, but they're much more cautious and play these rounds much more like an actual gun round. And you probably should. I mean, it's so painful to give these up. Nice recovery here. They did lose one of them. There's running Deagle shot from Flames. That looked insane. Nexa is going to be trying to come through the smoke, but it's just too much to handle on the other side. So, well done. Vitality able to make their way through that round, no problem. Yeah, and Megas putting together a nice start to the second half. Six kills so far in these first two rounds. Two there, four in the pistol. Climbing up that scoreboard. 12 and 6 for Megas. Zywoo leading the way for Vitality at 15. For OG, it's Flames at double digits with 10. as the leading fragger. USPs and three HE grenades for the defense. So looking at the scoreboard, even though it's just a three round difference, there is there's a lot more firepower it looks like right now on the Vitality side. 15, 12 on Dupree, 12 on Megas, and then on the other side, top fragging is Flames at 10 kills. So they probably need a little bit of that now once they get the rifles, that's going to be important. Ooh, that's very awkward, but... He's got some backup now. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Ooh, that's awkward. Let that's, him escape. Yeah, it's real awkward, but Zaiwu handles it. Triple kill from him. Magus with the Glock just coming into the B bomb site, and thankfully they get away without losing anything. Excuse me, they lose Dupree. I have some World War I trench fighting going on there. He's like, try he's trying to escape back over the friendly line, and officers there just saying, like, no. Nope, move forward. Get out onto the field. <laughs> we made the call. Blowing the whistle. That's tough, but um, yeah, they only lose to Priya. I guess that's, that's acceptable. 11 to seven, the score line, and OG had better had a, they better have a pretty good start here for the for the second half now that they pick up rifles, because this is now a four round gap. They invest straight into the double op. They're, yeah, I was gonna say, they're feeling the same exact way as you are, that they have to get started immediately. Double op set up right out of the gates, Magus. Molotov and flashbangs. MAC-10 is his. He's done good damage, but never spotted flames crossing all the way over. Still, one for one with the burn from Magisk. And it's Degster on catwalk. Nice op shot on Apex. Yeah, they walk right into that one. And they might not expect a second op already in this round. It's a little bit early. So they walk for the smoke. Simon's going to be gone. Fiku back here. No backup is anywhere nearby. So this is an extended battle. He has to win this one. Or they might be in trouble still. The Molotov is forcing him out. And Dupree, he plays it perfectly. Two versus two. And that was so patient. He trusted Spinks to win the battle in the middle. And he knew that there was no coming any kind of backup rotation coming down that way. Bomb is planted now, and it's a two on two. Sphinx has got to be careful. I don't think they really want to go for this at the moment. They want to keep the off in the hands of Dexter, but if he gives up a kill in the middle, if he tries to get over aggressive, that could be everything. Finds flames around the smoke, and now Dexter definitely has to back away. They know his position. Vitality could be ruthless. They know he's going to back away. And indeed, the round is given up. 12 for Vitality. That looked... It looked like it was pretty much already won when Fiku gets that first kill on Zesairu. But then yeah. you look at the minimap and you realize, well, wait a minute, he's still alone. There's not even anyone nearby. And then the Molotov play, 
And the super patience on Dupree. We saw him earlier, uh, you know, win that great battle over at the A-bomb side. The retake that he had, where he was yes. just very patient. Look for it. That's, again, you mentioned experience in that context, and there's more of it showing here. Very, very cool stuff. Not even necessarily about out-aiming the opponent in that moment, but just getting the grenade to do the work for you. And with a double up investment, that's a lot of yeah, money down it, the drain. It's a really, really perfect moment to have such a great, impactful play. 12-7. You know it's going to be another low buy. Dexter still has the off. Everything else is Deagles for OG's defense. They saw him, but how cool is that for Dexter? He's like, I've got the only AWP. I'm going to, I'm just going to try and find a battle in the middle and, and maybe win it. But they did spot him out. So a little bit risky. Up on the catwalk we go, and they have all five members on the CT side and heading this way. Dexter with one nice shot. We're going to have to see maybe two more like that for this to even be around. Otherwise, they're in a lot of trouble here. Nexa going to be found by Sphinx, and now Dexter's sandwiched in. He's feeling the pressure for sure. Neofrag goes down, Piku down here with the deal, but he can't find the shot, and they know exactly where Dexter is. The Sphinx kill on catwalk is so important because that takes away Dexter's defense. That takes away the guy watching his back, so he realizes, you know, Sphinx can be coming up with some kind of pace, and I would just never know, and he's just, he can no longer focus towards the railing where he'd already picked off two. He he has to back away. And now he's trapped. No saving this up. Yeah, that feels very... Un maybe if he could... I mean, Sphinx is low on health, so he's maybe with a pistol. He's got 100 HP. No, he's got, maybe survived the bomb blast and chill here. Someone from Vitality is going to have to hunt him down, but you have to imagine with the utility, they've got two flashbangs and Molotov as well. Once he's spotted out by Sphinx, no good shot. One more good flick, and there it is. Dexter's found the escape route. Not even touched. Some clean shooting. That is, well, that's the power of Dexter. That's what he wanted to do at the beginning of the round. If he could have had yeah. a fight like that right off the bat, maybe they could have worked out. That's still pretty cool. Guys, I got an up kill, by the way. <laughs> you have to celebrate the small things, you know. The worst kind of shit talking ever. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to, you know, make your own party if you need to. You know? Yeah, it's the last major. You know, yeah, put some faith in him. Put some, put some trust that he's going to be able to deliver some good shots. And speaking of which... Peace out, Fiku. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And that was going to be the only B defender. So now OG has to scramble into plan B way earlier than they would have liked to. Yeah, they have to basically cancel that A setup immediately and just try to recover whatever they can. Nice flashed kill there for Dexter. That, if he misses that shot, he's just so dead right away. So at least they make up for it back into a four on four and they need this round really badly. Time is running out here for OG. It's a five round gap and it's only growing really quickly at the moment. Vitality are doing such a good job, but the priest's gonna be found in the middle and that changes everything. Oh man, he was like a second or two away from just a magnificent play. He was almost able to find flames with his back turn just barely in cover. So now an op posted up inside of the B-bomb site. This is all on Mega Skin Zaiwu because Sphinx is just looking for the flank. He's just gonna be a nuisance on rotations. They need flames to miss a shot or a perfectly placed piece of utility from Zaiwu. How do you even get into position to throw that without also exposing yourself? Or you bank it off and then that gives the game away a little bit too. He's waiting for it and a nice shot there. Zaiwu not quick enough. Oh, wow. He is not even going to be uh, the primary opera, but that is magnificent. Sphinx is on his own, and as you pointed out, he was just meant to play a little bit of spoiler in the middle if they gave a got the bomb planted, but that's not going to happen now. One versus four for him, and he's got a couple of kills, sure, but the round is over. That's I wouldn't, I wouldn't so even, cool. I wouldn't even have minded if he actually just gets hyper-aggressive and tries to find one more at the end. He's got 6K in the bank. His team has plenty of money. You, you know, OG, this is the first round they've won in the second half. Their money is hurting on this CT side. You get one more kill, and this is extremely painful. Like, it already is. One more would add on top of it, but he's not going to go for anything. Interesting to see if OG will be able to salvage a double op setup from the dropped weapons. I know it's really oh. early on, but, yeah. you know, you bring in someone like Spinks, who obviously in, in his previous team looked like he was such an incredible playmaker, but it also felt like a lot of the team was sort of built around trying to make him comfortable and giving him a lot of the roles that he wanted to play and all the rest of it. It's, it's, there's no guarantee that if you put him into a new team, it's going to translate all that well, but he's doing he's playing a really good game right now. I mean, we have like half a map of Counter-Strike to show for, so I don't want to run too far with it, but still, it's pretty good. I mean, look, let's just put it this way. It has to translate. You bring you bring a player yeah, like Sphinx true. into this team, and it has to work. You have to prioritize getting him going because you want the space he's going to provide when he's effective. Apex stops in the flames, goes one for one. Utility's going to rain in and find Magus as well, who took a lot of damage from Utility in this round. 
and we have a four on three in the favor of OG. Minute and a half left on the clock. Defending that long position. Some of that vitality when they were on the CT side didn't really do all that well. They actually got beat out there along a couple of times, but... This time for OG, it works out just fine. Four versus three, and a single B defender. Might be one of the points of weakness here if they can find the kill on Fiku before anything else happens. Smoke to set it up, but it goes way behind him, and that is not quite accurate enough. Eason, a little bit of trouble here. Well, thankfully, the smoke has blocked off the choke point, so he can just wait patiently. Knows it's unlikely that anyone would try and challenge him through it, at least for the moment. Now backing off, all second smoke clears. There's the jump through, at least one. That's not bad from Fiku. Dupree's gonna be able to cross over double doors. He's got the bomb. Dupree and Zaiwu to hold off a retake. Two on three, must win round for OG. Molotov thrown out right away from the T side, but the CTs have a couple of their own and a flashbang to set it up so they can clear out a lot of space before they actually go for the retake. Vitality, if they this, win this one, it's crushing. Look at the money on the CT side. OG have to win this round if they want a chance at winning this best of one. Saihu answering back. He's going to get his 21st kill right there on Dexter. Back up into Upper Dark, taking down Flames. And Nexa, no chance. If Dupree had got a kill, for sure Saihu would have. And that is, that looked so confident. That wasn't even close to a retake. No, Saihu was just gaming there, wasn't he? That first pick on a Dexter has got to feel absolutely horrible in a three on two. We say it all the time. Beat Bombsite, even with a man advantage, such a tough bomb site to retake in absolutely brutal 14 to 8 six round lead and no money for og oh they have money but not enough to really force they have to kind of drop down to a lower buy to just fight for overtime but it is not looking good no it's not and it's kind of heartbreaking because i feel like they've been playing a game that's better than the scoreline currently would suggest it's got that, that, you know, 14 to 8 scoreline, but it feels like OG have been more competitive than, than that. But now they just, they might run out of cash and never be able to, to actually do much on the CT side here. Yeah, there's, there's so many win conditions right now in this game for Vitality. 6 to 1 run in this second half. Impressive from Vitality as their first look. We're going to get a lot of first looks over these next two weeks. I think it was something when I went through... Ooh. <laughs> Sit down. Yeah. When I went through the team list, I, I, I think there's like, I think like two thirds of the teams that are going to be here at, uh, at the fall, uh, fall split and group stage uh, made a change like from like Lisbon on. Wow. Yeah. That's like there's been a lot of changes. People are just searching for that whatever magic configuration they're hoping to, to, to find. We've hit like a period in Counter-Strike where it feels like there's, there's another arms race going on for just pure raw fragging talent. Yeah. to catch up with FaZe, to catch up with Na'Vi, who obviously have the fragging and the talent, but they've also got the tactics as well. And other teams we've seen have the tactics, but maybe not the fragging to back it up. There are so many good young players right now that yep. it's even understandable why that pressure would be there, because those players really do exist. You could probably go look for them. And a bomb plant here in spite of a little bit of struggle, losing both Apex and Dupree. Molotov on top of the smoke, just slowing them down. And because three of them are retaken from this position, there's just no way. Nothing they could do to hold on to it here. 15 rounds on the side of Vitality. And OG need to go on a seven-round run to even get into overtime. Doesn't feel likely. Doesn't feel likely at all. But yeah, I feel like all of the, all of the changes on all of the teams, it makes it, in a way... So unpredictable when you when you start out a new season like this. There's just absolutely no way to know. Which one's your favorite change? Oh, my favorite change right now. Vitality, G2 are obvious ones. Uh, we'll even go with the heroic one. Let's let's throw Yekandar with Liquid in there. It's uh, it's a hundred percent actually. That's I, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to pick that because I guess that's kind of previous. Yeah, yeah. Just like the frosted wall. Got that 15 to 8 scoreline. Seven in a row is what they need. And Neo Frag, he's going to be charging top mid. Apex. I don't think he was flashed. He just wasn't ready for it. Cyber, though, will pick it up right afterwards, ending his captain. And it's back into a 4 on 4. But I like it from Neo Frag nonetheless. I think that's a, that's a cool move to be able to pull out. Well, cool move in a desperate situation. And that kind of aggression from the defense is going to slow things down. Vitality at the moment is kind of wondering what's next. Is there any follow-up? 
Was there a layer to this? Or did they just send Neofrag forward? Magus has given up information in towards Upper Dark. That's going to fall onto Dupree. That's his responsibility now. He's in the lower tunnels. And he's going to join up with Spinks out towards Long, but still Vitality playing a very patient game. Sab right back from the break and rocking up into the first match with 24 kills in 24 rounds. That's pretty great. I don't know if we were expecting anything else, but that's obviously what you want to see. Spinks, great way to handle that. Not even a lot of utility or any utility, just the crouch peak to take down flames. And that's a great way to get started. Four versus three. I think that's a kill that the old Vitality before Spinks joins probably wouldn't have found. That That's one that feels like that's kind of the new talent of Spinks coming in to find that one. And obviously no way to properly back up that statement, but that just feels like a frag that they wouldn't have been able to give the previous roster. Dexter never saw Spinks cross over, so he gets caught with his pants down, still finds the kill. Eventually traded off, and we're on a three on two. But both defenders are here at this eight bomb site. Zaiwu still far back. And there's only 10 seconds. They need that bomb plant right now. If they get slowed down, that might be another round for OG, a chance to get back in. Bomb still being planted, and they're successful in doing it. One on one versus Saiwu. Nobody wants to be in this position. He's got the Molotov, and he's going to throw it out right away on that first contact. And there's nothing you do about it. He has to just back out with no kit either. Even if the bomb is not planted really in a great position for Saiwu, this is still devastating. Almost getting the tag, and now he's going to run for it. Deagle out, and he hears it. Pico has to come off. He finally finds it and comes back for it. And I think he has enough time. That is so scary. If Zywoo gets back behind the boxes there, he probably wins the round. Yeah, I'm actually, I actually really like that play from Zywoo as well, making the run over to the box. And then you can just kind of jiggle peek and play. Otherwise, you're, you're all constantly always playing the kind of gamble. You're kind of just calling each other's bluff. Almost makes it across, but good shots right at the end. I can't believe they get this bomb planted in time. That was almost a complete disaster for Fiku. Beautiful shooting. He needed that kill immediately. Six more rounds is all OG needs. They've had two CT rounds in this game so far. Yeah, almost losing this opening game. But they have a chance. And a little bit of money now to work with, too. Warp in play. Gonna be some spree. That's almost a kill with the follow-up HG. It definitely should be. Dupree gets blown up. That's a nice start, and they don't realize. But he is up out of the pit to take down Sphinx. And a great double kill out long to win the battle again. OG, oh, they've been doing that a couple of times now. Well done. Five versus three, and maybe not that much vitality could do about it. Apex almost looks like he's <laughs> taking his hand off the keyboard, thinking for a minute, like, oh, what are we... Yeah. What is the plan? He's just got a tech nine. He's like, okay, so who's the IGL of this operation? Yeah. Anyone else want to take over this <laughs> mess that I've left? <laughs> who's got any ideas? I'm just going to march up catwalk. Pack mentality, 3v5. At least the bomb is in their control. Still plenty of time on the clock, but there's no reason why OG would do anything right now. They, they don't have to actually go look for anything. So just avoid that AWP of Saibu and it's all good. Oh well, yeah, don't panic. Don't over-rotate anything that you see. Utility spent on Catwalk. Zaiwu peering over the top, not seeing anything. There's the Four kill out towards Long. Good trade, but not enough. Nice shot on Fiku, but still 27 seconds. He has to get at least one more for even the bomb plant to be possible. And he's just going to be found out. Outside of the range of the scope there, Nexa able to take him down. And now Apex out in the middle, angry that his plans did not work out, but not going to be able to do anything about the round. 10 to 15. Yeah, they needed that second kill off Catwalk to really allow Apex to get activated, to really pull a rotator into his glimpse. Good round from OG. Apex taking the glasses off. Clearing his vision. It's 15 to 10. And Vitality's pretty much out of money, I believe. Yeah, so m maybe for the first time in the second half, a chance for a, for, a, for a break for OG where they can actually start to enjoy the game a little bit more. Now, I mean, it's looking possible. Overtime could happen the way that this is going. All right, let's... Just calm it down. I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, you really are. I want all the counter we can get now that we're back. You're jumping like seven stages ahead of uh, yeah. where we're at. Straight in. I'm in investing right away. Double Never gone wrong for anyone. No, exactly. And even if it does, just Order sign the that you should invest more, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Up catwalk we go. No utility. One Deagle on Megisk. One P250 on Apex. That's it. That's all the offense has. 
Oh, the run burst. Yeah, it's cancelled. That's upsetting. Those are always funny. I especially appreciate it when it's glocked, because it just seems to make no difference at all. You're just acrobatically throwing somebody into a bomb site to die. So, at least it's like a skeet shooting. Yeah, let's, yeah. Stand, let's stand skeet shoot cam. Go back to Fiku. Oh, missed it. Wide right. Nexa's got a couple. Apex falls to his death. Nexa finishes with four, and Apex takes the ace away. Maybe it was a wind that put a shot off a little bit, you know? Yeah. Bird shot gets uh gets pulled by the elements. Yeah, gotta be gotta be careful with that stuff. But next up, not uh not opening kills, and that's the end of it. So it feels like that's super likely to happen still. He's been scary, and Spink's up there right behind him at 19 kills. So talk about him slotting into the team and feeling feeling pretty good about the situation. Right now. Yeah, this is looking impressive. Nade is a little bit early down in the lower dark, but Flames did not want to stick around any longer. And nothing unusual about the setup here for the OG side. Maybe a little bit light in if this is a if it is some sort of a mid to B split that's gonna happen for the vitality side, it feels like OG. Well, maybe a minute ago were a little bit Ooh. unprotected. That's that's an opening. What a shot from Sphinx. The exact opening you need. And it was Dexter out there. Yeah. Not even close to quick enough for that one. Yeah, that was a big boy kill from Sphinx, the new addition. They love that. They're feeling that at the moment. Fiku moves towards back plat. Off rings through the smoke, misses its shot. So does the second one. Deep Molotov on towards plat flame. Good utility usage is going to blind all the defenders. Fiku is neutralized. He's got to get aggressive. He finds one, but Dupree in middle is able to shut him down, and this should be the map. Two on four, and Vitality is in the B bomb site. Yeah, wow. He actually, he tried to stay very calm. You could tell he wanted to put out that smoke or the Molotov behind him, but he was like, you know, wait a minute, maybe I don't have to. He was trying to play around the smoke that was coming in. I think he did almost everything that he could have there, but just way too much pressure on him inside of the bomb site. Two versus three as they find Apex in the middle. But again, this retake is almost impossible coming in from the OG side. Vitality, they're dug in deep here on the bomb side. And now they got the flank out middle from Spink. So if they're too slow, they're going to get shot in the back. There's Cypher with the one. And Nexa, no chance here. It's 16 to 